Welcome to josephsmithspolygamy.org, the audio version. Sylvia Porter Sessions was born on July 31, 1818 in Andover, Maine to David Sessions and Patty Bartlett. The family was baptized in 1835 and migrated to Missouri in 1837. There, Sylvia met Windsor Lyon, whom she married on April 21, 1838, in a ceremony performed by Joseph Smith. Two years later, they had relocated to Nauvoo. In the past few decades, Sylvia's relationship with Joseph Smith has been scrutinized by many researchers who assumed her daughter, Josephine Lyon, was fathered by Joseph Smith. In fact, Brian was convinced this was the case until recently. Nevertheless, Dr. Ugo Perego's latest genetic research shows Windsor was Josephine's father. Josephine Lyon was born February 8, 1844, which correlates with a conception date of approximately May 18, 1843. If she were full term, Ugo's painstaking analysis of the DNA documents show that Sylvia experienced sexual relations with Windsor at that time. Family history records indicate that many family members always assumed that Josephine and Sylvia's other children, born to her after her sibling to Joseph, were Joseph's children only in a spiritual sense. This new DNA evidence necessitates a new look at the relationship between Joseph Smith and Sylvia Sessions Lyon. One interpretation asserts that Windsor was the only husband with whom Sylvia experienced conjugality in Nauvoo and that her ceiling to Joseph was a non-sexual, eternity-only one like that of Ruth Vos Sayers, who was to be Joseph's wife only after death. This view is controversial because shortly before her 1882 death, Sylvia called Josephine to her side. Josephine reported in 1915, she then told me that I was the daughter of the prophet Joseph Smith. Generally, this language would be interpreted to mean the physical paternity. However, within the church, starting with the 1877 dedication of the St. George Temple, proxy ceilings as vicarious adoption ordinances were creating fathers and daughters among individuals with no physical kinship relationship. For this and other reasons, several researchers have written that the language is too ambiguous to draw strict conclusions. Author Rexy Cooper declared, I find the evidence to be less convincing on three different grounds. Other scholars have agreed. Additional supportive evidence comes from a letter from Joseph Smith III to our LDS leader E.C. Brand in 1894. She, Sylvia, may have been sealed, but her testimony to E.C. Briggs gives the case away as to children by Joseph Smith. If my memory serves me right, she was childless in Nauvoo. President Smith then added, Mountainous air and some vigorous proxy may have done for Joseph what he did not do for himself. Less the enjoyment, of course. Bah! I have not been able to locate any notes from an interview between E.C. Higgs and Sylvia Sessions, but Joseph Smith III concluded that Sylvia's comments precluded any children being born as a result of her relationship with the prophet. Contradicting this view are evidences besides the 1915 affidavit. In 1888, George Bramhall recorded in his journal, went to Spanish Fork, evening, had a talk with Father Hales, who told me that it was said that Joseph Smith had a daughter named Josephine living in Bountiful, Utah. At that time, Josephine Lyon lived in Bountiful with her husband, Mr. Fisher. Similarly, State President Angus Cannon told Joseph Smith III in 1905, I will now refer you to one case where it was said by the girl's grandmother that your father has a daughter born of a plural wife. The girl's grandmother was Mother Sessions, who lived in Napu and died here in the valley. She was the granddaughter of Mother Sessions. That girl, I believe, is living today in Bountiful, north of this city. 
One way of looking at Sylvia's 1882 statement would be that Sylvia did not mean Josephine was literally Joseph's offspring, but was his daughter only spiritually due to an eternity owning ceiling. It would also assume that the rumors of the prophet's paternity originated with someone else, perhaps Patty Sessions, Josephine's grandmother, who was simply misinformed. Sylvia did preface her statement to Josephine, saying that she desired to tell me something which she had kept as an entire secret from me and from others. In conclusion, contradictory evidence exists regarding a possible sexual relationship between Sylvia Sessions and Joseph Smith.